Hello, hello, hello everybody. I'm D Loaded, and today I have something very interesting for you. Uh, recently, one of my good friends asked me if I could make a roof tutorial. It's, um... You know, it's... A, the roof is a very, very important part of your building. Sometimes it can be um, upwards of 50% of the surface area of your entire building. It just depends on how how large you're going and uh, what you're planning on doing with it. So I'm going to go over some basic shapes, as you can see in the background, of your roof. I'm also going to talk about putting a roof on a tower, and um, I'll demonstrate a few other things as well. The first roof design that we're going to talk about is this kind of gently sloping roof. A uh, hard and fast rule is that you make this one with slabs and it goes over two blocks for every one that it goes up. You can combine it, sometimes you can put oak wood stairs on the edge of the roof before you start to go up with slabs, but again it just depends on your personal preference. This is just the general shape the profile of what you want to be going for with this. This shape is good, generally speaking, for warehouses, for storage buildings, sheds, barns, um, and and things of that nature. Typically, is what uh, is what I use it for, and what I've seen people use it for. But you know, it's it's not limited to that. You can make houses with it if you want. It all depends on the look that you're trying to go for. So see, this would be like the entrance to a shed that I've just created. Next up we have basically the most basic roof design ever. This is called a gable. And it just... You place staircases, you go up to a single point, and people often like to do this on the inside. They do upside down staircases. Another variation that you can add to this is on the very edge. You can go across with stairs like that. So this would be an example of a very basic roof where you just do that exact same thing. One common thing people do is they will add details to the edge of the roof. They'll add a little, uh, a little pointed thing, or uh, there, there are other designs that you can make with slabs. This one sort of looks like a dragon. There are various things you can do on the little uh, head head of the roof. I don't know what you would call this, but this is very common, especially when people are making Viking style builds and you want to give your, your city a little bit more of a Nordic feel. That's something people would do. Another thing that has gone unspoken so far, you should pretty much always be overhanging your roof on by one block on the sides and typically on the front as well. Just give it a one block overhang over the side of your building. <clears throat> and now this design, much pointier. This is much more of a Viking-esque design. It goes two blocks up for every one block over. So it's the complete opposite of that design over there. See what I did there? Very basic. It's it's one step up. 
complexity. Now, one thing to remember about this roof is that it is always going to be taller and have a much, much wider surface area than the shallower roof designs. And because of that, uh, you may end up with, especially if you have a one-story building, you may end up with like 80% of your building being roof, which, you know, may or may not be what you want, but just, just keep that in mind. Um, the reason, historically, for Viking roofs and roofs in Northern European countries being so pointy is because not only does rain have to pour off the sides, but snow does as well. So this is actually a stronger shape for withstanding snowfall. This design is a favorite of mine. It's a little bit of a hybrid. The core design feature behind this is that it's kind of a combination of the generic gable roof and the pointy Viking roof. It goes up a couple, and then it goes back to, it, it goes up two blocks a few times, and then it goes back at the very top to being a normal roof. Um, this is kind of a very small example of it. Let me demonstrate for you what a larger example of this would look like. So let's say, that's a better size. So I'll go up one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then in the center, we would return to a normal, more gentle slope. There you go. This almost looks bell-shaped. This example will look a little bit more... a little bit more shapely because it's larger. The shape's gonna be more well-defined. I used to never do upside down staircases on the inside of roofs, and that's because I had a belief that it made the roof look too thick. Um, which actually is kind of true, it does make the roof look very thick, but almost everyone does it like that, so that was a mental block which I recently had to get over. But as you can see, this uh, hybrid shape is kind of a bell, bell shape. It's, it's very arch-like. It's not like a perfect triangular shape. It's, it's more of an arch-shaped roof. Now let's talk about putting a roof on a tower. Behind me, I built this small example of, let's just sort of imagine that this is the top of your tower at the very top. How do you put a roof on this? A pointy, a nice pointy medieval roof. Well, because the wall decorations and detailing is all made of oak wood, I'm going to make the roof out of something darker, spruce wood. That's a very key and important uh, tip to remember. When you're going to make a roof, always try to make the roof out of a material that's uh, different or darker than the wood type that you used for the walls or for uh, for detailing. The 
gives it, your building some some nice contrast. So I went around the top with this layer of normal spruce planks, and now I am adding staircases, a rim of staircases around the perimeter so that it has that overhang. The next step, I'm going to find the center, which is right here, and I'm going to place one spruce block at each point. There we go. Next, I'm going to add another level of spruce staircases. And you can go ahead and place one spruce staircase on top of all of your middle points that you've placed across the building. Next, you get out your spruce planks again, and you can use the staircase you placed on top of that previous center block as a jumping off point for the second level. There we go. Can you guess what we're going to do next? From here on up, it's rinse and repeat. We can actually cut the corners out. I find that doing that uh, enhances the shape ever so slightly, prevents it from looking too boxy. And then again, you go around and you place one spruce stair on your center your center line of the roof. I like to call this the ridge. And there we go. Next level. Okay, so here's where the fun part begins. This is the very tip. No spruce stairs on any of these corners, because remember we cut the corners out going all the way up. Place the stairs as so, and then you can either go one or two blocks up, depending on how you're feeling. Another detail that you can add once you reach the very top like this is you can just put spruce fences into these gaps and two at the top like that to make it look extra pointy. And there you have it. There is your generic pointy tower roof design. This design, as long as you follow the pattern of going up by one each time and using the center ridge line, will work for any square shape. So now let's talk about adding detail to your existing roof. Behind me I have one of the roofs from my previous video about the timber frame style. Uh, this one in particular has a very flat looking side of the roof. It's very boring, there's not much going on. So. What do I want to do if I have a roof that looks like this? What do I want to do to add some more detail? There's a bunch of different options and I'm going to demonstrate a few of them. The easiest way is to simply add a little section like this into the roof where you have a little part of the, the house peeking through. I don't know the architectural name for this, but extremely common, extremely easy to do. Like so. Another option, to move on to the next house to demonstrate this, is you can um, add a tower on top of your roof.
Smallest tower size, of course, is going to be 3x3. Three three. And then we go around and we use the generic tower roof design that I showed you from earlier to give this thing a nice pointy roof. There you have it. If you don't want to do either one of those two options, you can also simply texture the roof by adding random kind of solid blocks to the center of the roof. This makes the roof look bumpy. It definitely makes the roof look more uh, run down, more ghetto. But a lot of builders do this. It's a very popular technique. kind of a basic example of that. But you can go even more extreme with it. So, what if you want to do something even more ridiculous than that? <laughs> there is another technique which is very, very advanced, and it's essentially what I like to call it is that you're Boeing your roof. Now you might be like, Boeing, what the hell does that mean? You'll see what I mean as I uh, start to show what I'm talking about here. So, this is like the center line of your roof. This is the, the spine. Okay? So, when I say Boeing your roof, what I mean is that we bend this line, we bend it up or alternatively you could bend it down i'm going to demonstrate bowing your roof upward because that's a little bit easier so you want to figure out how much you want to bow it by and for this example i'm going to do um two blocks typically actually this roof has no has no side let me add that Okay, so we want to take this center line and we want to bend it up. How do we do that? Well, let's count in from the side. One, two, three blocks. Let's just go ahead and cut right there. Go to the other side. One, two, three. Make another cut. And we want to just go ahead and delete this entire spine. And we want to go ahead and just delete the entire roof, actually. Going all the way down from that from that point where we made the cut. This is something that ideally you would want to plan before you start building the roof. I'm just demonstrating this on an, exist, on an existing house so that you can see what I'm talking about.
Okay, so look, we did one, two, three. Let's do one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. And then in the center. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so it connects like that, and that's fine. To have the middle section of your roof be larger is totally fine. We go ahead and delete this. We have to modify the walls to accommodate the fact that we're doing this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now it starts getting a lot easier. As I lay out the first level of stairs, you're going to see pretty quickly that this is now taking shape. So one thing we can do that does create this little gap here, and one thing we can do to alleviate that discrepancy is to put a slab. That sort of fixes the problem, sort of. Um, we can smooth it out a little bit more if we really want to with something like that. Because we have these window frames though, we're gonna end up needing to connect the window frames to the roof. So we're gonna have to do something like this, which is a little bit weird looking, to be honest. Um, if you're going to do this design on a building that has window frames like this on the side, I would consider just uh, deleting the window frames and then figuring it out later after you've, after you've fixed the roof. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. For now, I'm just going to delete these window frames and I'll go back and I'll go back and fi uh, fix it later. I may have to adjust the position of some of these windows. So, we want to go up the side with spruce blocks like that. Go up and down. And fill everything in. Think of this as, instead of building your roof all the way across in a straight line, you're building it in sections. There's this section, this section, this section. It's like, it's like a slice of the roof, and each one gets a little bit higher. One thing to note is that this technique is actually considerably more expensive when it comes to materials than a normal roof, and that's because of the excessive usage of the planks on the sides like this. That costs a little bit more. And it also costs like double the amount of time it would take you to make a normal roof, but sometimes if your building is particularly special, or if you're going for this kind of aesthetic, then it's worth it. You do have to plan the sides of your building, as I said earlier, to accommodate for this, though. But that's what that's an example of what a bowed roof would look like. Some people combine this bowed roof design with the texturing, and you could end up with some, like, very over-the-top, bumpy-looking designs. 
you can experiment with that yourself and see if you like it. I think it looks like a little bit overkill when I see too many different techniques being combined in one building. But, you know, it's all up to you. The great thing about building is that uh, if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. It's all about what you can make work, what you think looks good. So there are many discoveries out there still for people to make of techniques of how to do this. Uh, am I happy with this? It's okay. This is okay. Something along those lines maybe works. This has been Deloaded's Roof Tutorial. Refer back to this video anytime you're looking for new ideas or are confused about one of these roof designs. Post in the comments below if you have questions. Thanks so much for watching.